Once upon a time, there was a king with hairs of white. He sat in his bedchambers day after day, knitting, knitting, crocheting, making the tapestries with which the walls of the kingdom were created. His castle covered in these tapestries, but he rarely went out anymore. And the only other thing he loved to do was play with a round bauble covered in jewels that he had collected during his time as reigning king. Well, one night he fell asleep holding the bauble in his hands and had an interesting dream. In the dream, a great golden bird of fire flew across the skies, glowing and resplendent, and the king drew from the hairs of his head an arrow, notched it in his bow, and shot the bird out of the sky. It fell to the earth and shattered into a million pieces like the setting sun. When he awoke, the bauble was missing. He ran out of his room in consternation and found himself in a hallway filled with busy people he did not recognize. None of them looked at him or acknowledged him. And as he walked through tapestry-filled hall after tapestry-filled hall, he found himself nearly lost in his own strange castle. Before long, he came to a small room. In the corner, a mouse nibbling crumbs at the baseboards, and he felt a breeze blowing in from the side. He moved a tapestry out of the way and found a small window that looked out onto the blue sky. When he peered out, there was no earth, no trees, no water, only sky with castle to the right and left, stretching out in either direction, fluttering as far as he could see, floating in the blue. Aren't you the king? He heard a voice beside him ask. He turned and saw the mouse addressing him. Why, yes, I am, he said. In fact, I'm looking for a bauble of mine. I had a strange dream last night, and when I awoke it was missing. Oh, said the mouse, yes, you foolish man, you shot the firebird, and that is what stole your bauble. To get it back, you must retrieve the pieces of this bird and put them in a cauldron I have beside me. How do I do that, said the king. Well, said the mouse, you must go back to your bedchambers and lift the rug that you yourself made from the floor Underneath you will find a small door. Go through the door, enter another world, and retrieve the crystalline tear eye of the firebird. You will know where to find it, said the mouse. The king ran back to his chambers, lifted the carpet, and there was a door, just as the mouse had said. He stepped through and found himself in another world. In this world, lush trees grew, fruits and nuts hung like crystal jewels. There were deer running and birds flying. But as he walked, he started to notice a certain sickness in this land. And before long, he came to an old, decrepit stream covered in concrete and metal piping and realized he'd been here before as a youth. It had been beautiful. He'd drunk of the lush spring water and felt more alive than ever. In fact, he had sung and danced out loud right there in the forest. But now, broken down and destroyed, he began to cry. How much of it had been his fault? He had taken the samples of the water, sold them down the stream into the city. A huge demand had grown for this wonderful liquid, and ultimately he had sold the whole thing to a global distribution company which had marketed and owned the spring as its own and sold the water across the world. Now it was destroyed and the forest lay dying down the stream. And the king wept bitter tears 
at the loss of this wonderful place, where his tears hit the soil. Crystalline jewel appeared. He reached down for it and picked it up in his hand and woke up in his bedchambers. He ran to the mouse. I think I have the crystal eye, he said. Hmm, you do, said the mouse. Let me put it in this cauldron, but go back now. There are two more things you must get. The next one is the talon of the firebird. You must again lift the carpet and go through the door. The king ran back and did as he was told, and this time found himself on a vast shore in front of an ocean. On the shore were cliffs, and a little trickle of water ran like a waterfall down the side of one of the cliffs before vanishing back into the earth. And the land itself, the beach, was teeming with creatures like people, only smaller. The firebird had asked him to find the real child, but be careful, he said, they will trick you. One of the little creatures approached, limping with strange skin the color of blue-green, said, Please, king, will you help me? Uh, we are all thirsty, but we cannot drink. And he looked, and the teeming hordes spread out, all approaching him, begging for water. And the king said, uh, I cannot help you. I, I just need to look for the, the, the real child. Are you the real child? And the king thought, For God's sake, it can't be the real child. This is a disgusting little creature. But, said the creature, It is from your folly that I became this way the poisoned waters around your kingdom, the wheels of your cart that ran me over on the side of the road crippling me, my family left to fend for themselves when you had promised benefits. I don't know, said the king, and as he looked left and right he saw his whole ancestry spread out beside him, all of them ready to fight the hordes or to help in whatever way the spirits can. The king thought to himself, well, at least I can dig a pool. And he walked up and dug a little pool in the side of the cliff where the water would collect and they could reach and drink. And each one came and drank a little bit of the golden water. Do you think that was enough to heal the hordes of thirsty children? And as the king looked down, he saw the talon of the firebird in the base of the pond and he picked it up and he woke up in his bedchambers and ran down the halls past the people who did not acknowledge him or look at him all the way to the mouse who said, Aha! You have the talon. I will put it in the pot. One more thing you must now get, which is the feather. One golden feather. Go back again. Go into the door and find yourself in another world. Bring me the feather from she who rides the ocean. He went back. He found himself knee-deep in an ocean, waves on him, cliffs behind, a vacant beach, but a small waterfall of golden water running down into the oceans, and out in the waves in front of him a boat bobbing. On the boat a figure hooded standing with a pole in the water, and the boat itself resplendent filled with stars. The king waded closer. Can you help me? I, I'm looking for a feather, the king said. No answer from the being on the boat. He walked closer. Oh, the stars glowed beautifully. He wanted one, so he even reached out his hand, and as he touched one, all of them went black. How dare you steal more from me? Haven't you taken enough? said the figure in the boat. Uh, please don't hurt me. Yeah, she said, I have been here longer than anyone has, and I am tired of you taking without returning. Perhaps it is time for you to repay me with something, maybe with your life. Uh, please don't, said the king, and not knowing what to do, he beat his head with his hands and felt a strange feeling, and before you knew it, he was drawing something out of the very hairs of his head, and it was a long, beautiful, resplendent feather and he, not knowing what to do, laughed and offered it to the creature who took it and was rather tickled at the whole thing and thought, oh, this is an unusual event, and laughed and said, why, instead of your life, you have given me 
pleasure and joy. That is worth much, she said, in your innocence. And the king woke in his bedchambers and was holding the feather. He ran to the mouse. They put it in a pot. The mouse stirred and sang ancient songs from its grandparents, and poof, out of the pot flew this resplendent phoenix firebird up from the cauldron in its hands the bauble which it dropped at the king's feet and flew out the window into the blue. The king ran to the window and watched it go so beautiful, flying and flying, and nowhere for him to go but back in the hallways. Are you happy now? said the mouse, and the king had to admit he was not happy. I want to be free more than anything, he said. Mmm, said the mouse. One more thing you must find then, the heart of the firebird. Take the bauble that the bird dropped back to your bedchamber, sit in your favorite knitting chair, and pick off each of those encrusted jewels one by one until you come to the center, and there you will find, if you are lucky, the heart of the firebird. The king did as he was asked, and as he went through each jewel, came to the golden glass orb. Inside, as he gazed, he saw a floating castle in a sky of blue, its walls billowing in the wind and the clouds. Gazing deeper, he saw inside a bedchamber, and inside the bedchamber, a king, an old gray-haired man, an old white-haired man holding a glass sphere, and the sphere was glowing bright as the sun. He had found the heart of the firebird. That night the king had a dream of flying. He flew high. He circled his castle, which was now on an earthen foundation. Fields, forests, ponds, camps of people, campfires, thriving, or at least healthy families and he flew away into the sky. He did not awake, for in the morning they found the king dead. And the mouse became the new king. Now what do you think of that? <laughs>